another top recruit in the 2024 class is talking about the Indiana Hoosiers. Can IU keep this hot streak rolling? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. You are Locked On Hoosiers, the one and only daily IU podcast. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. And we are part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. We're also free and available anywhere you guys listen to podcasts, including over on YouTube. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. A reminder, uh, we also are with Sirius XM now, which means you can listen to Locked On on the Sirius XM app. Uh, it also means during the season when football basketball games are going on you can listen to iu there as well just uh go to sirius xm or the sxm app and search hoosiers we're also i don't know if we, we ever really mentioned this we're available on uh, amazon you can listen to us on your echo uh just ask your echo for to listen to locked on hoosiers we're free we're we're available there and without the ads, so uh, even more incentive to go over there. Indiana's on a bit of a hot streak right now after landing, uh, landing McKenzie Mbako, and there's another top recruit that's discussing the Indiana Hoosiers, Liam McNeely, a name some of you might be familiar with. Uh, he's someone we discussed about a year ago, actually, last summer. One of the top recruits in the 2024 class. He's number seven in 247 sports composite rankings. 247's a, a lot lower on him than a lot of places are. They have him 14th. A lot of places are much higher. Uh, he's the number one power forward in the class based on their composite ratings. He's a 6'7 power forward. Someone that's really shot up the rankings. Uh, he is from Texas. So... They've kind of been seen as the front runner. However, he plays at Montverde, Montverde, uh, which Indiana has some inroads into and, and certainly uh, have landed a number of guys from there. And also, the situation going on at Texas has opened up things in his recruitment more. There's a new coach there. B coach Beard is not the one recruiting him at Texas anymore. So things are changing. Recently, he, uh, well, very recently on Wednesday, he spoke with 247 Sports. Prior to that, the recently part is that he visited Texas and new head coach Rodney Terry. He talked about that visit, but more importantly to us, Hoosier fans, he discussed IU and had some interesting comments uh, to make. So uh, in that article, on 247 Sports, he said, uh, it says, prior to his official visit to Austin, McNeely completed an official visit to Indiana last fall. Mike Woodson and the Hoosier staff have continued to prioritize him since then and want him to make a return to Bloomington. Quote, they want me to come down for another official visit pretty soon. They have kept up the love and kept up the conversation. I like them. We talk about how Coach Woodson can get players to the league. He's been in the league for a long time. Jalen Huchafino is going to get drafted. Trace Jackson Davis received the combine invitation. So what he does translates. I know I sound like a broken record in saying this, but the way Indiana basically nailed Jalen Huchafino's one-and-done season is going to have lasting effects. Assuming they can do it with McKenzie and Baco, which – it would be pretty disastrous if he isn't one and done and potentially even Kalel Ware. that will open up more and more doors. But the fact that Jalen Huchifino comes here is one and done and is going to be a, I mean, we discussed it in Thursday's show, uh, potentially a lottery pick, but a 15 to 20, 25, somewhere in there in the first round pick. I mean, guys are noticing. We mentioned Dylan Harper in a show, I believe at the beginning of this week, talking about how Mike, he said, Mike Woodson put you in a position to succeed. Liam McNeely, those are two top 
10, top 15 guys in the 2024 class talking about Indiana as a place you can go before going to the NBA. That's such a drastic uh, kind of shift in the reputation Indiana had. Nobody was talking like that when Archie Miller was here. They were barely talking like that when Tom Crean was here. And even then, he wasn't really landing those types of guys. He, I mean, he he had great recruiting classes, but it was Victor Oladipo and Will Sheehy, who were the kind of hidden gems. He got Cody Zeller, but he was in-state. He got Thomas Bryant. Depending on what you want to believe, he might have been hand-delivered by Adidas. But he wasn't getting the very, very top guys, and it, ultimately he was burning a lot of bridges in the recruiting uh, circuit, and he wasn't going to get those types of guys. Indiana hasn't been seen as this place where you can go play a year there, improve, and then use that as a springboard to the NBA. Sure, Romeo was here. He played a season. He went to the NBA. I, it was an all right season. I, I kind of come away from it underwhelmed. I know statistically it looks good. Maybe it was just kind of the, the way the season itself played out. But he went on to the NBA and made millions and millions of dollars, even as uh, maybe unsuccessful as you, you think that might have been. He's uh, he he's made he's he has enough money to never have to work another day in his life. That's success to me. But having said all that, I kind of got off on a tangent. Nobody ever looked at Archie Miller and said he can get me to the next level. They're looking at Mike Woodson like that. They're looking at this coaching staff like that, saying, I can go there. Those guys can help me and then get me to that next level. That's huge because that's how these top prospects are looking at schools. Can they help me in my journey, in my one and done journey to the next level? It may not be how people like to recruit, but if you want to get the top guys and compete year in and year out, that's what you have to do. You have to be that springboard to the NBA. So seeing Dylan Harper say that, seeing Liam McNeely say that, that stuff resonates. Guys are paying attention. Jalen Jalen Huchifino was a, a big first step. Getting McKenzie Mbaku is a big second step. Repeating that process with him just to prove that it wasn't some type of fluke will be the next step. If you repeat that process with him, the door is wide open. There is no doubt at that point. You go to Indiana, you improve, you go to the NBA. And that would change a lot of things. But guys are already taking notice. And we've discussed that uh, multiple times in the last week. Top recruits are taking notice about what Indiana is doing. And just having that reputation is really big when you're recruiting. Because guys have a, a goal to get to the NBA. And if Indiana can be the school that helps get them to that goal, that's a win for all parties involved. He also discussed his timeline. It's not going to be anything inevitable. Quote, I do not have any more visits planned or scheduled. I have no clue about a timeline for a decision either. I'm just focused on the summer right now. I believe his only two visits have been to IU in Texas. Uh, Alabama is a school involved, but he hasn't visited them. So seems like he's going to play out the summer with AAU and then potentially make visits again in the fall. But Indiana's in there. They want him back on campus. They should. He He's a stud and uh, fits the what Indiana wants, 6'7", 190. How many times have we said basically those measurements in the last two, three weeks talking about high school players? So I'm excited. I think the door is wide open for the Hoosiers to, to really start making headway with these top guys on the recruiting trail. We've talked a lot about IU basketball recruiting. Let's show some love to IU football because kind of behind the scenes, uh, away from all the attention the basketball team has gotten, they've put together a really good transfer class. So we're going to look at that, see where the Hoosiers rank there, and see what it might mean for this upcoming season. We'll do all that here in a moment. First, let's talk about Bird Dog, the new sponsor that we've spent this week talking about. Uh, bird dogs are just the the perfect combination of shorts that are a great fit. They're comfortable to wear around. Everybody in our uh, college uh, group message for all the college 
channels on Locked On can't stop talking about how comfortable they are. And they're versatile. You can wear them doing literally whatever you're going to do today. If you're going to go out and mow the yard, if you're going to go out and get, and go for a swim, if you're going to go play golf, if you're going to sit on the couch, these are a versatile short that can do all of that and you can be comfortable uh, throughout it all. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. And when you enter the promo code locked on college, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler. I'm covering the name. Yeti style tumbler with every order. Look, if nothing else, guys, the, the names are absolutely hilarious. And I keep saying that, and I, I don't want to spoil it because I want you guys to go see them because you'll just start laughing. If nothing else, spend a few minutes going and laughing at the names. But I promise they're also worth the money as well. So try them out today. You guys are not going to regret it. Big shout out to you guys for making us your first listen every single day. Every day is next week on the show. Uh, in between any kind of transfer news we may get, we're going to start doing more season recaps. I think we're going to calm down with the transfer rumors now. Uh, so we're going to start doing more season recaps. So let us know who you want to talk about, who you want to hear about uh, with some of these season recaps as we start to slow down a little bit as the wild spring starts to come to an end. It's been a wild spring for the basketball team, but it's been the same for the football team. So earlier this week on Tuesday, I believe, IU got a commitment from Oregon transfer Anthony Jones. Uh, he is the sixth commitment since April 26th, so about three weeks, so about two a week, IU is getting. Uh, five of those have come from the transfer portal. He is the 20th member of the 2023 recruiting class for IU from the transfer portal alone. So IU is kind of reshaping its roster a bit through the transfer portal. Jones is, uh, a, he had offers from Cal, Texas Tech, San Diego State, Utah State. He was listed as an athlete coming out of uh, high school. I believe he played as a cornerback at Oregon. He didn't really play a lot. Uh, he was, I believe he only had like one, he had one tackle in two games. He was redshirted. So he has four years of eligibility left. He was an edge defender. Excuse me. Not sure why I thought cornerback, but he was listed as an athlete. So he could be a number of things. We'll see if IU moves him around, uh, coming out of high school. He had offers from Arizona, Colorado, Miami, Texas, USC, Washington, like a lot of top places. Uh, he was the 40th best athlete in the nation, according to 247 Sports. So he was sought after coming out of high school, had one season in Oregon where things didn't work out, and now he's in Bloomington. And as I said, the 20th member of this transfer recruiting class, and if you go take a look at the transfer team rankings for um, from 247 Sports, you're going to see the Hoosiers kind of high up there. Not shockingly, uh, Indiana, I'll, I'll give you some frame of reference. Indiana has 23 commits. That's on the high side. Uh, Arizona State is a couple spots above them at 29th. I'll tell you where IU sits in a minute. Uh, if you're into the 20s, you're, you're a little bit on the high side. A lot of places are in the teens to high teens. Colorado has 48 commitments. Yeah. They are, you want to talk about reshaping a roster. They are absolutely doing that. So the Hoosier, Colorado is obviously number one. Uh, the Hoosiers come in at 16th and one of the top teams in the Big Ten. I don't know a ton about what to put, uh, how much weight to put into this. Uh, I believe that Indiana is actually the top team in the Big Ten. They are. I don't know how much weight to put into this because if you're bringing a whole lot of guys in, that means a whole lot of guys left. But if you get it right and you nail those guys coming in, then um, it, it's it's a win overall. So IU has 23 commitments coming in. A, a number of them we discussed already. You're looking at Andre Carter, who we discussed. He's the top guy Indiana got. Uh, Dequise Carter, we discussed. Marcus Burris Jr., we discussed. Uh, the latest ones have been Anthony Jones, who grades out as a three-star. 
Um, Noah Boltikoff, who I believe we mentioned, an offensive lineman, Trey Lang, an edge rusher. Robbie Harrison uh, is the most recent transfer back in mid-April. So all those guys have come in the last month. Um, The Hoosiers, a couple takeaways from this is that Indiana has kind of remade its defensive line that has we've discussed it and outside of his first season in Bloomington he hasn't had Tom Allen has not had a great defensive line and his first season was him as a defensive coordinator we always talk about kind of making the the chaos and creating chaos and things like that I use defensive line has not been able to do that really at all with very few exceptions. Uh, there might be one guy here or there, and it might only last for a half season or so, but consistently creating chaos has not been something that defensive line has done. They've completely reshaped the defensive line. It might be one of the best the Hoosiers have had under Tom Allen. Andre Carter, by all accounts, is a stud and going to be really good this season. He looks like a legitimate defensive lineman. He is a big boy. Marcus Burris Jr., he was the, I believe, the second highest rated or third highest rated player Indiana got in the transfer portal. Also a defensive lineman. Uh, A lot of the top guys Indiana's got have been defensive linemen or edge rushers. There's a bit of a sting, obviously, because you look at this and it reminds you that Deshaun McCullough left, but... The Hoosiers have done as good as they can to bounce back and replace kind of some of those those holes. And so what I would say is based on what we're seeing in the transfer portal and the amount of talent they brought in, this defense should be vastly improved from last year. I sure would hope so because it was a mess last season. It was supposed to be good, or at least parts of it last season, and it was not. So hopefully it is an improved defense this upcoming season. Um, I think there are probably going to be maybe more questions on the offense and the defense. The offensive line is going to be a question until they actually prove that they can block, and we'll see if a new coach is able to change that. And then you have questions at the quarterback position with Taven Jackson and whether he's going to immediately take over the reins. But I feel a lot more comfortable about where the defense is, which is odd to say considering how bad they looked last season uh, and the talent they lost. But it should be an improvement. It needed the overhaul that Indiana has given it. So hopefully this leads to improvement. I'm not drinking the proverbial Kool-Aid yet. And I'm not going to be a believer of this team until they prove themselves. I'm well past that point. But if you wanted to be optimistic, there are reasons to be optimistic about what Tom Allen and his staff have done in the transfer portal. Look, that leash is getting shorter and shorter on him. He's kind of got to prove himself again this season. We can have that discussion much later, but, uh, he, he's entering a danger zone, so he is starting off that period pretty well. IU softball and baseball have big weekends ahead of them. We're going to preview both of them, talk about IU softball in the NCAA tournament, and the IU baseball team is letting a chance at a Big Ten title slip right through its hands. We'll get you updated on both of those here in just a moment. IU softball. Back in the NCAA tournament, they will be heading to Knoxville. They uh, start, I was going to say tip off, they start play today in Knoxville. So Tennessee is hosting its 18th straight regional. Tennessee is a bit of a, a blue blood, a bit of a powerhouse. The number four seed they got this season is the highest seed they have ever had, which... A little surprising if you're hosting 18 straight regionals, but nonetheless, Indiana, Louisville, Northern Kentucky will join them, join Tennessee and Knoxville. Tennessee's 48 and 18 in the opening weekend of the tournament and have advanced 11 times past this regional round. So 
Indiana's got its work cut out for them. They will start at 3 p.m. today, and I believe that game is still going to be on ESPN. Uh, they will play Louisville first, a team that they played earlier in the season and beat. And then Northern Kentucky will play Tennessee in the second game. After that, there'll be three games on Saturday and potentially two games on Sunday. It'll depend on if Indiana wins and loses where they'll play. It's a double elimination kind of style. So Indiana has two losses before its season is done. When you have an offense like Indiana's has, you, you got a, a puncher's chance. Uh, they'll have to come with a little bit more than they did in the Big Ten tournament, though. But they'll have a chance, if nothing else. Uh, Louisville comes in. I use 42 and 16. Uh, Louisville comes in with a 35 and 18 record. Northern Kentucky won the Horizon League regular season and tournament title. And that is how they earn their berth into the NCAA tournament. So it'll be a fun weekend to watch. Uh, as I said, the Hoosiers are, will be on ESPN2, I believe. Uh, that's what they were slated. It would only be if they got, for some reason, taken off uh, that they would not be on ESPN2. I'm looking as we discuss it. Um, but Indiana will be on ESPN2, and then the rest of the games are going to be on ESPN+, Plus, including the title game. Uh, so you'll get to watch Indiana once on TV, and then uh, hopefully you have ESPN+. Plus to watch the Hoosiers the rest of the way. It'll be on ESPN2, 3 o'clock today. Uh, against, I use a two seed in the regional. Louisville is the three seed. It'll be a fun one to watch. I'll be sure to uh, to tune in to that one. I hope you guys do too. And Anna Baseball, on the other hand, I'm not sure if I want to watch what they're about to do this weekend. They absolutely let one get away from them on Thursday night. Blew a lead to Michigan State to lose 8-6. to six. I believe they were up five to three, gave up a basis clearing triple, and then Michigan State capped off. It was a basis clearing double, actually, I think. But Michigan State tacked on a few more runs, hung on for a late rally, and they win eight to six. As we mentioned earlier in the week, IU headed into this weekend tied with Maryland for the Big Ten title. Maryland wins against Penn State at Penn State by a football score of 17 to 15. Wild score there, but it ends with Maryland one game ahead of Indiana after one game played for each of them. Iowa could factor into this. They're 14 and 7. They had a game canceled at some point, so they played one fewer game than everyone else. Uh I think it would require a couple more losses and them winning and I don't know, but technically they're a half game back of Indiana right now. Indiana is a game back of Maryland. Indiana plays in Michigan State tonight at 8 o'clock, and then they wrap up the series tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Maryland will play uh, tonight at 5, and then they wrap up their series tomorrow at noon. So both times Indiana is going to know what Maryland's result is. If Maryland wins tomorrow, they clinch a share of the Big Ten title. Indiana is going to need some help. It's out of their control now, and they let one get away on Thursday. That one's going to sting a little bit. So they're a game back with two games left in the Big Ten. Those games, I believe, are on BTM+. Plus. I'll give a double check. That's what I saw them on before. They might change them around. Uh, I would imagine Maryland probably gets the preference. Since they're the team ahead, no, Big Ten Network for both games, 8 o'clock and 3 o'clock tonight and tomorrow. So if you want to watch the Hoosiers try to capture a Big Ten title, you can tune in to Big Ten Network. Plenty of softball and baseball action to watch this weekend. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. Every day is Monday on the show. We'll recap all this baseball and softball action. And then, as I said, start doing some season recaps. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to the podcast if you can. Uh, helps us out a bunch. If you leave a rating and review, whether it's on Spotify or Apple, really appreciate all of you that do that. Most importantly, though, guys, hope your week ends well this Friday. And as always, Elio.